Hello, I'm Derek Monroe. Come along with me as I interview some of the industry's top beauty insiders, along with a few celebs, on this episode of Behind the Scenes Beauty. Who would have ever thought six months ago when I filmed Wade the Barber that he would be my last interview because of COVID-19? Well, I'm glad to say we're back! <laughs> and I can't think of a better person to start off this new season of Behind the Scenes Beauty with than none other than my friend. He is the host of To Catch a Beautician on VH1. He is also known as HOTUS, hairstylist to the United States because he of his amazing work with Michelle Obama, none other than the Johnny Wright. Hey, welcome, Derek. welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to finally be on this show. I'm, I'm like, happy. When am I gonna be on the show? Oh, I'm, listen. <laughs> all you got to do is let me know when you're available. <laughs> I'm here. I'm I here. am so glad. Yeah. So, how has COVID-19 and affected the Johnny world? What's you know, in the beginning, it was it was fine. I know that sounds weird to say because. People were losing their lives and everything. But for me personally, it was fine because I had just wrapped, you know, to catch a petition. That's a wrap. Um, I took a two-week vacation. I went to Bora Bora in Australia and Tahiti. I saw the pictures. I was jealous. Right. And so then <laughs> I got back. I, I was supposed to come straight here. I, I landed on a Friday, was supposed to hop on a plane on a Saturday right. to come back to New York to finish off Tamron Hall's you know, first season. But we got the call that they shut the studio down. So I was locked down in LA and I looked at it, at it like an extended vacation. Right. You know, I went vegan during that time for three months. I'm not vegan anymore. I was going to ask. But, you know, I do still cook a lot of vegan dishes. Right. And I loved it. So I went vegan during that time. I was able to just read and relax and spend time with my dog and all that. That was great. I bought a bike and I was just, you know, riding around the city. So initially it was fine. But now it's a little challenging because I'm back in New York. And although right now New York is the safest place to be, you know, as far as the COVID numbers... It's just not my New York because yeah. it's a very cautious New York and I get it. I'm yeah. not trying to change that. So I'm just, you know, it's been challenging to kind of figure that out. I, you know, wanted to kind of really decorate my place here. I realized how, how I was living like a college student right. before I left here. I was like, I didn't have a toaster. What's that? But you were never here. So I was, you know, I was here throughout the yeah. week and then back in L.A. throughout the weekend. But I finally decorated my place. So I'm feeling really comfortable just in case we are on lockdown again. So. Gotcha. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been challenging, but all in all, no complaints, I'm good. Gotcha. And all my family is alive and nobody got affected, so I'm good. Great, yeah. great to hear. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of people that follow you have heard your story, but yeah. just in case, because Behind the Scenes Beauty hits a lot of different audiences that yeah. might not have known your story. So tell us a little bit about your story. Of course, tell us how you even got started doing it. How I got started. So, you know, I started doing hair very young. I'm from the south side of Chicago. Um, I started doing hair when I was around 11 years mm -hmm. old, 10 or 11 years old. Um, my grandmother is a hair, was a hairstylist. Okay. She started doing hair when she was 13. She was, she was taught under Madam T.J. Walker yeah. wow. and that, that schooling and everything. And she did hair until she was 91 years old. Rest in peace, Minnie Brown. Um, she did hair until she was 91 years old, and she passed when she was 93. Okay. Um, so I got it honest from her. But it's also in my, my blood, just my grandmother on my mother's side, which is Minnie Brown, but my, also my grandmother on my father's side and my uncles and my um, grandfather, they was barbers and hairstylists. So it was just in my blood. My uncle still has a salon in Chicago called Chase Salon that, that, um, that he's been having for almost 30 years now. Uh, he's been in that spot. So it's just in my blood, and I've always been infatuated with hair and styling hair. That's the, that's the part of me that I really felt that was the most creative is when I did hair. Of course, I create you know, other things in my mind, but really it came down to you know, doing hair. So I started very young. Um, um, my father put a salon in the, our basement for me when I was 14 years old. Oh, wow. That's um, when I started. I was 14 yeah. years old when I started. He put a salon there, put a shampoo bowl, a station, painted it and everything. So I was, had a full-on business at 13, 14 years old, and it kept going on until I ended up leaving my mom's house and I started working in my first salon. But I worked down there, and I had a full business. I had an assistant. I had two assistants. 
Um, shout out to Lanye <laughs> and Jatan, <laughs> two assistants, and uh, I had a secretary. Shout out to Latrice. They were my they were my staff oh, at wow. 15 years old. What, right. Like, what are you doing with a staff at 15? And I tell people this all the time. I used to do hair till like three, four o'clock in the morning, and go to sleep for a couple of hours, and then go to school. And I was doing my teacher's hair. I tell people all the time, like. I don't know much about trigonometry, but I got to be out of the class <laughs> because I was doing Miss Furcon finger waves and French rolls every and, two weeks. And she could not fail you. She could not fail me because of that. Because of that. <laughs> and that's really, pretty style. much where it all started for me. I was, right. you know, in the city of Chicago. I still love home. I still have a home there. I still go back and visit. I haven't been to visit since COVID because my mom was like, I'm going to hug you. I was like, mom, it's not a good idea. I don't right. know, you know, but I'm going to go in a couple of weeks. But yeah, that's where I all started. Got you. Yeah. One thing I will say, there's very few people that I have worked with that I feel like they have a love for hair. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, you are that person. Oh, like, thank you. they're like, because there are some of us that we're good at it, we can do it. There are some of us that we love it, but if something else came along, we would go somewhere else. Yeah. But working with you, you're such an artist of your craft. And I can tell that when you say it's in your blood, mm -hmm. it's in your blood. Oh, it's, thank you for that. You, thank you. You are you are one of the best. And I don't say that I don't say that trying to be flattering. I, your work is meticulous. Yeah, very. Let me tell you, <laughs> the first time you probably don't even realize what impressed me the most. What impressed me the most was when uh, you were grooming someone because you weren't here. You were in D.C. still at the time, and you were grooming someone to sort of help Tamara. Mm -hmm. When you weren't here, you had me come yeah. and uh, work, uh, well, sort of look at you and see what it is that you do. And the fact that Tamara's hair was short, yeah, <laughs> and I and blow dried natural, it, <laughs> and you blow dried it like she had been wrapped under the dryer. <laughs> yeah. I never yeah. seen anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's it's those little things and tips and stuff that I take from you, and I've just appreciated to have ever known you. Oh, and thank you. And appreciate what you bring. You to too. I mean, your comb is amazing. You have you your finish is fantastic. Thank I've you. always said that to you. You have, yeah. I, but you know what? I I never feel it. Yeah. I never really feel it. Yeah. I always am that person. Yeah, we that beat ourselves up. We do. Yeah, yeah. We do. And yeah. what is amazing too is how I, I feel like we're jumping, but I just getting it all out as we talk because that's what we do. We have conversations. Yeah, yeah. But I felt like even with Tamron's hair, her hair being short, you still make it something new every day. I try, right? You I try. make it new. And I... I was, thank you. Kudos to you for You know, I was trying really last year. I was like, I was trying to get that Emmy nomination. But <laughs> Can I be honest? I was shocked that you didn't get it. I was, I was shocked expecting. too. I wasn't too shocked. You know what it is? I don't think short hair, especially they, short hair on black women, has been recognized enough to... For people to see it as being this versatile I knew that, thing. That, that was the reason yeah. why. And I get it. It's no big deal. I, I, I've been no, in the White is. House, so it's no, fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> right. No, but still, though, I mean, we're going to get to that. Because yeah. I want to talk about what you want to go. Because there has been so many accomplishments you've had. So. Yeah, thank but, you. So let me scale back a little bit, though. I do want to talk about um, your first uh, step into the limelight as far as with celebrity Celebrity, hair. yeah. Who was your first celebrity? So my first celebrity was Lisa Ray, who oh, wow. was also my first first lady as well. Oh, right, right, right. Lisa Ray was the first lady of Turks and Caicos. Okay. And I used to, she used to fly us out there and be with her for months at a time, doing her for all the events that was going on there as, as she was the first lady, rebuilding that island and changing the vibe of that island out there, which I think she did a great job mm -hmm. with. So she was my first first lady and I met her through my, one of my first mentors, his name is Landis Johnson. Okay. He's a makeup artist. And okay. he kind of took me up under his wing because he was like, there's no competition here. He wanted to show me the ropes of freelance hairstyling and, and makeup artistry and all that kind of stuff. So he, he had a lot of celebrity clients and all the celebrities that came into Chicago, they would call him. And when they didn't have hair, they, he would call me and I would start working with them. So that's how they were to meet Lisa Ray. Was... Um, celebrity and fashion and all of that, was that a lane you ever pursued or would you, were you one of those people like, I'm just happy to be in the salon or that was a, that was a goal that I want, that's mine? Yeah, it was, it was because what happened was I didn't go to cosmetology school until I was 20, 
one or 20. Okay. Um, so, but I had been doing hair for a very long time. So I had like a lot of technical skills, but I didn't have any theory. You know, I need to know what was hair made up of and how mm -hmm. to really make sure I kept hair healthy, you mm -hmm. know? So when I went to hair school, that's when it pivoted for me. Um, initially, when I was, you know, working in my little Johnny's basement salon in my parents' basement, I um, thought I was going to open up a salon and open up a chain of salon that was I was going to do. But when I went to hair school, and because I was so talented, the director knew about me prior to me coming to school. Oh, wow. Her name was Miss Clausen. Shout out to Miss Clausen. She still is the director of. Dudley's Beauty College in Chicago. Come on, Dudley. Uh, she's still the education director. She knew who I was, so she was like, get your butt in, in school, get your license. But because I was so technically advanced, she would send me on a lot of different things. I would do competitions and things like this. So one time, Budweiser reached out because they used to have the Bud Girls, or maybe oh, Miller. Yeah. They, they had the Miller Girls, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they needed some stylists to come volunteer to do hair for a photo shoot. Before then, I didn't know what a photo shoot was. I had no idea. And she sent me on this photo shoot. I was like, so you mean to tell me I could come and do hair on set and they could take pictures of it? It's going to be a billboard? Right. <laughs> I'm in. This is what I got to do. And that's when I was like, this is what I want to do. And the idea of owning a salon completely left me after that. Oh, wow. I did not want to own a salon anymore. <laughs> I just wanted to work on set, set. and do session styling. and and. From that, that's when I understood that, well, a lot of this set work is with celebrities, you know? Right. So I wanted to, you know, connect more with celebrities, and I, that's exactly what I did. You know, I always tell people you get the desires of your heart. Your job is to have the desire and to keep the faith. You'll get exactly what you want, and that's what I did. True. Yeah. Okay, so you're in Chicago. When, do you, when is it that Chicago feels like it's not enough anymore? So I, so, so fast forward, fast forward, right? So I'm like, this is like 2002. I um, get a, 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 a model, a, a makeup artist friend of mine. Her name is Trafina Johnson. Um, she had, I've been working with her. She was actually working on The View back then, working with uh, Star Jones okay. and things like that. Um, but she was back and forth between here and New York. And, I was working with her on some stuff. We did some fashion shows together, you know, like the Chipman Circuit in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And she reached out to me and said, hey, I work with Soft Sheen Carson. They're looking for some new techs. And would you want to come in and audition for that? I was like, sure. So I went in and met Jacqueline Tehran, who's my mentor mm -hmm. to this day. And um, she hired me to work with L'Oreal. So I became a um, technical consultant at the time. And the brand was Soft Sheen Carson, but I also worked with a bunch of different brands throughout, throughout L'Oreal. And that's when I started to expand um, the idea of what a hairstylist was and not just being behind the chair in the salon and things like that. And so it just kept growing and kept growing. Um, and then maybe about 2005, 2006, um, they, we used to do this thing called the trend release. Mm -hmm. And the trend release was this, like, you know, big, like, show that we would do to showcase the product and do like, you know, edutainment and right. show, do a comb out on stage and all that kind of stuff. And we would, we would invite consumers and stylists to the trim release. And this particular trim release, and at the time I was already doing like a radio show on, with Roland Martin called The World According to Johnny on WBON talk radio, so I was... You were talking beauty or were you I was, talking I, 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 would, I would say I bring the chair to the air, so I would talk about things that I would talk about with my clients, whether it be personal or beauty. It would oh, be different wow. things. And we would have the audience call in and give their opinion on it. It was, it was a fun little segment that I did every Friday with Roland Martin, right? Mm -hmm. So Jackie knew that, and so this particular trim release, there was a portion of the trim release that, that it was a color competition. And Jackie would get up there and host it, and, she, and the, the, the stylists would come up and present their work and all that. So she just came to me one day and was like, you got to go host a color competition. I was like, huh? And I had never spoken in front of an audience before in my life. I mm -hmm. never did that. She said, you got to go host a color competition. I was like, oh, okay. So she, she's like giving me the cue cards and literally pushing me on stage in front of 500 people. Why did you have to host it? Because Jackie saw something in me that she, I didn't see in myself. And she knew if you would have... And I had time. She would have tried to back out of it. Right. So she threw me on stage, <laughs> and I had, I was, I remember being nervous and shaking, but I just was like being my funny self. And when I got my first laugh, I was like, oh, okay. Right. And I kept doing it. I was like, 
And I, I literally felt like I was floating. You know, it was mm -hmm. the it was the most natural high. I, I can't even, I don't even know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. She saw something in me that I didn't see myself, and then I realized that there was more for me. And I wanted to do more and I wanted to expand my brand a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's when it all changed for me. And then by 2007, I decided to move to Los Angeles and okay. pursue a television career. And that's what happened so far. Now, okay. now it's happening, yo. Of course, that, get, that got detoured by the forever first lady, Michelle Obama, but and let's, I made that happen. And let us detour yeah. to that. So yeah. you're, you're in LA and you're, you're getting ready to start your own life and mm -hmm. then you get a phone call. I get a phone call. So, no, I wasn't in LA yet. Okay. I was in Chicago. This is 2007. This is probably like May okay. 2007. And my agent, um, his name is Kim Raboza, still my agent to this day, he reached out to me and said, hey, I got this um, Essence Magazine photo shoot. It's with this, the senator's wife named Michelle Obama. Um, are you interested in doing it? They had just announced maybe about three weeks prior that they were running for presidency on Oprah. They said it. And I was like, okay. Oh, yeah, I know. I saw Oprah. Sure, I'll do right. it. It was on a Monday. I didn't work on Mondays. I went and did it. That's where I met her. We hit it off. And pretty much the rest was history. I could walk you through it. So what happened was I did it for, for um, Essence Magazine. Her staff called me about maybe a month later to do it for O Magazine. Um, but by that time, I decided to move to L.A. Um, I was probably a month or so out mm -hmm. before I moved to L.A. I was leaving 300 clients in Chicago and taking this chance to move to L.A. to work at Fedra Vakai. And I did an O Magazine, and I was like, hey, you know, good luck. I hope you guys win, but I'm moving <laughs> to L.A. You know, not right, thinking that... You don't even conceive how that those two worlds come together. Yeah, and I... Because you know you won't go into D.C. At I time. wasn't... I, I didn't... But honestly, I wasn't... You know, I, although I'm an eternal optimist, but, you know... As a society, we didn't know that a black first family would ever be in the White House. Sure. You know, so I just wasn't too optimistic about it. But I was like, good luck. Hope you guys win. And then I moved to L.A., but she kept in touch with me. So she would come to L.A. because the campaign became more and more intense. And it was very busy. It was all over the place. She was in L.A. often. Mm -hmm. So she was doing Ella DeGeneres and Jay Leno. She would call me to keep a camera ready for those things. And our relationship continued to grow. And then the DNC happened, where she had that amazing speech. Let us work together to fulfill their hopes, and let's stand together to elect Barack Obama, President of the United States of America. That was the first time I had did her hair from start to finish. Okay. All the other times, I just kept it up from whatever Ronnie Flowers did on mm -hmm. there. You know, just made her camera ready. Um, and that was the first time, and I, everybody noticed it. You know, I remember they talked about it on The View. They talked about, they talked about it everywhere. You know, they talked about her speech, but they talked about her hair. Um, and I think that's really why I kind of sealed the deal. Not that I was trying to. I just right. kind of sealed the deal that time. And then, you know, the DNC happened. The election happened. They won. I had an election party at my house in, in, um, in um, L.A., and we was all crying and celebrating and wow. joyous and happy. And about three weeks after that, I get a call from her chief of staff, Melissa Winters, and asking me, if, can I come do her for the cover of Vogue, which was happening in, like, January, January 13th. And I was like, yeah, like, right. I get to cover a Vogue right, with the right. first, like, yes, I'll take it. Not thinking that I was going to be working with her. Right. I just thought I was, like, they were throwing me a bone for working with her throughout the campaign. Right. You know what I mean? Went there, did it. The first thing she said to me before I even started her hair, she, was, she said hi to me. She was like, hey, are you willing to move to DC to be my hairstylist? And I was like, what? Because I wasn't expecting right. that. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> right. You know, of course I was. And then I, I was like, now I got to work with this excitement on me. So I, I started doing hair and I started thinking about it. I was like, how am I going to move? And I'm, I'm going to do this. Because, right. like, you know, I had just started right. a new salon. I wasn't making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. I had to kind of figure this out. Your nerves is tore up. So, so I said, so I said, to, I said, could you just give me a month? Right. And it was just January 13th. She, I said, just give me a month. She's like, okay, I'll, you can have a month. I moved to D.C. on Valentine's Day. It was a month and a day later. Wow. And I figured it out. And wow. I was there for eight whole years. <laughs> I know it's eight years. Yeah. What is, what is one moment in that span? I know there are many. Mm -hmm. but just one of, what is one of those moments that stands out, experiences someone things y'all did as far as like that stands out to you and that you cherish to be a part of? Um, just being a part of such a 
moment in time in history. I mean, it's not, I don't know if it's one thing I could point out. I mean, all the traveling, you know, we traveled to over 49 countries and being able to travel on Air Force One and all that was amazing. Um, all the traveling was beautiful because I love to travel already. So when I was able to do it at that level, it was like, this is really cool. Right, right, right. Um, but just, you know, those, you know, of course, you know, when you're in somebody's life for that long um, um, and that closely, those intimate moments with her was great. You know, I used to have like little dinner parties for the crew mm -hmm. at my house and she would come. Aww. And that was always really sweet and yeah. kind and fun because we would throw surprise birthday parties for somebody in the crew, you know. Right. So things like that, th those moments I would always cherish. cherish. And just the, just the, um, the opportunity to work with the first African-American first lady, I just, you know, you can't beat that. It's I mean, amazing. Do, you, do you like, would there be moments you would pinch yourself and be like? Yeah, I, so I used I'm to tell here. people, in the beginning I used to pinch <laughs> myself, right? And then afterwards, I had to slap myself and be like, Johnny, you're doing this. Right, like, right, right. Because it, was just, you, you, it be, becomes work, right? right, right so right. you forget the, 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 the uh, bigness of it. I don't right. know, I want to say, you know, the, just how large it is. And you forget, because you're like, I got to be at work on time. I got to deliver. I got to <laughs> make sure, you know, I got to pack my bag a certain way. It's just, it becomes work. So I had to kind of slap myself back into like, Johnny, enjoy this moment. Right. Like, don't. Don't let it be too worky that you don't enjoy every moment of it. So I did enjoy every moment of gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yeah. So, okay, so the presidency is ending. Mm -hmm. And now, were you faced, did you already have a defined plan? I didn't. Mm -mm. No. I actually was going to stay with her um, a little longer, um, at least, you know, until till Sasha went to school. I was going to stay just a little longer. But you know, I, 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 I honestly, I had a conversation with Tamron, and Tamron, you know, Tamron's my sister. Right. And I was, I was torn because I was ready to get back to what I moved to LA for, but I didn't want to feel like I was giving up on her. Right. Um, and I, I'm a very loyal person. But then, you know, I had a conversation with Tamron, and Tamron just made it very simple to me. She said, Johnny, you did it. Wow, what do I love about Jonathan Wright? Well, I have known Johnny since he was 18 years old. When we met in Chicago, I was anchoring at the time. I was in my late 20s. And this kid came up to me and said, I had a dream that I was going to do your hair. And uh, he was doing hair in his mom's basement at the time. He ended up doing my hair and here I am now, a 50 year old woman, and he is still hooking me up. I love Johnny because he is so bold. His heart is so pure and he roots on other people like you can't imagine. So I, I just adore that about him. I adore his spirit. I've loved watching his journey from that kid doing hair in the basement to the White House to still being at my side as a friend, as a confidant, and as a just dope hairstylist. You don't have to fight for because doing it Because it becomes anymore. a thing that like, yeah. how long do I live in your life? Yeah. And when do I start to live, live in my life? life. Yeah. And when she said that to me, it was like a light, but I was like, I did it. I, I, I kept my promise. I stayed for both terms. Now it's time to go do me. Right. And I had the hard conversation with Michelle and told her, you know, I'm going to go back to L.A. Okay. And left her with Yune. Right. And Yune Which is, is amazing. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the presidency is ending and mm -hmm. now you decide you're going to go back to starting your life yeah. and everything you want to do. Yeah. You're packing up and yeah. going to L.A. Yeah. And then again, <laughs> right. here comes your pause to L.A. You get yeah. a call from 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 for Tamron. Here's the thing: it wasn't so much of a script. It was it was a build up to it. So I was planning out how I was going to do it because, you know, Tamron was always had you know aspirations of having her own talk show. Mm -hmm. So I knew that that was a possibility. Um, but I also knew that I had to get to LA. All right. So there's a lot of things that kind of happened that kind of put Tamron's show on, on pause, mm -hmm. you know, with the whole Me Too stuff yeah. and Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein all, that kind of stuff, all, of that. all that kind of stuff kind of put it on pause, So, which was great for me because I was able to kind of build my life in LA mm -hmm. and start working with Queen Latifah and Kerry Washington mm -hmm. and Samira Wiley and mm -hmm. Angela Rye, who mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm obsessed with because mm -hmm. of you. Yeah. I miss both you and Johnny so much. Uh, what I love about working with Johnny is it's always a party. We got snacks. We got drinks flowing um, and we're having a good time. And um, one of my favorite memories of Johnny is 
um, when I was getting ready for the wearable art gala the first time. And he took out this picture, which was his hair inspiration. And he was going to do this hairdo on me. And I melted down. You know, guys, you guys know I could throw a good tantrum. And I was like, Johnny, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Blah, blah, blah. And he was like, just trust me. And from that moment on, um, I've trusted him with every look, with every single thing. And um, he's just he's just incredible. And so what I love about Johnny is he's not just a hairstylist. He is a hair artist. And he has stretched me every single time. And um, you all are both amazing and dynamic. I love you both so much. Um, so I was able to start doing that and like build my, my life in L.A. So when the Tamron Hall show really got, you know, greenlit, I knew that I was not going to give up L.A. Gotcha. So the only option would, to, would be to be by coastal. coastal. So I wasn't doing that again because gotcha. I got to do me. Gotcha. And Tamron is one of my biggest supporters. Because let's talk about it. Let's talk. How long have you known Tamron? I mean, I've been knowing Tamron since I was 21. I've been knowing Tamron for over 20 years now. That's how wow. long I've been doing and, and how did you guys... So Tamron was hosting. She, you know, she was one of the number one anchors in Chicago mm -hmm. it's on Fox News. And she was hosting a fashion show that I attended. And what's so funny is Tamron used to just be, a, you know, just doing a reporter. She was a reporter. She used to do this thing called Bottom Line. Mm -hmm. And one morning I was doing my mom's hair and for church. Mm -hmm. And Tamron was reporting. And I, looked, I was looking at the news and I literally said out loud to my mom, I said, I'm going to do her hair one day. Oh, wow. I just literally said that. And my mom, being the most optimistic person in the world, she was like, I'm sure you will, right? <laughs> A few weeks later, I meet her at this, fa this fashion show she hosted. I was young and fresh and still in my beginning stages of my new freelance career, right? Mm -hmm. So I used to carry my comp cards and my, my portfolio around with mm -hmm. me. And I walked over to her and I said, I want to do your hair. And I said, here's my work, you know? And she was open to it. And she looked through it and she was like, she said, it's funny that you, you, you approached me because I just fired my hairstylist. Oh, wow. Just like that. And about two weeks later, she made an appointment with me and we've been good ever since. Ever since. Ever since, yeah. Okay. 20 years, 20 plus years. So now you're okay, here, you decide to be by coastal you come. How has it been doing daytime television for you? It's, 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 it's cool. It's, you know, Tamron's schedule is, is pretty chill. Yeah. Um, we work three days a week. Um, there's three live shows and two tape shows. So it's not so bad. And the fact that it's not five days and I can escape and go back to L.A. for the weekend and have my clients there and do all that kind of stuff. And most of the red carpet's on weekends anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm able to have, you know, my life too. But it, it, it's really cool. It's, 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 a, it's very structured, mm -hmm. which I'm used to because I was with the first lady for eight years. Mm -hmm. So, and it's Taryn. It's like my sister. I'm a little jealous of you all <laughs> because on The View, um, we're in the news division. So yes, we, yeah. we get notes on, 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 that's too glamorous. You got to pull it back. You oh, no, dial really? It back. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so when we're in the hair and makeup room and we have Tamron on, which comes on an hour before us, yeah. and we see her coming out looking like she is... Like a glamazon, <laughs> right? I am always mad, and I'm always sending you a text you like, know. Tamron looks good, amazing today. And yeah. every time Karen, which is a makeup artist at our show, she's like, yeah. <laughs> she, I mean, from the clothes to the makeup to the hair, it's amazing yeah. how in sync yeah. you guys are and how beautifully you all pull her. Yeah, together. So she, she wears art well. She does. She does, and she's a beautiful canvas to work on, and she's beautiful inside and out, so I do enjoy that part of it, too, because, like, she be slaying it. She, she be slaying it. kills it. And I'm loving this, you know, second season. I went real, real short pixie on her, yeah. because I was kind of over the flip thing and the, the spiky stuff, so right now, it's, it's just really fun. It's so easy. It takes me 10 minutes to do my hair. But, <laughs> but you still can't even tell that, like, you can see the movement in it. It doesn't look overly with too much product. No, like, no, no. it's it's clean, it's beautiful hair. Yeah, you know? thank you. I, don't, I wonder if you have to be a hairstylist to notice those little... I think things. people notice it. They may not know exactly what they notice. What it they, is. they love exactly. it, they like it, and they, it feels good when they see it. Oh, yeah. like the little... Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's, you, it's, you, it's easy. You know so I'm paying easy. attention. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, so you had that moment on stage where you felt like, oh, I like talking to people, and then... I'm sure there were opportunities of television mm -hmm. coming your way. Yeah. Why not? What were some of those opportunities? Whereas people trying to get you to be 
What were some of those things? <laughs> yeah, most of them, especially during this time period, was a lot of reality shows. Mm -hmm. And I made it a thing to say, I do not want to do any docuseries. Gotcha. You know? I would do a formatted show, which is what yes. To Catch a Petition is. It's a format show. But I wouldn't do a reality. I don't want cameras with me and my friends having dinner gotcha. and the producer's talking to one of my friends to try to start some mess with it. I don't want to do that. Gotcha. I don't want cameras in my life like that in that way, you gotcha. know? And I'm not necessarily the most private person. I'm pretty much an open book, but that's just, to me, didn't feel like a good way to, for, to brand myself. So, who you so I got a lot of that came my way. Um, there was, a, you know, I did a lot of red carpet correspondence stuff, but I still love doing that. Mm -hmm. I might be doing a little more of that in, um, in the future. But those are the main things that came my way, and you know, like this, like gay brunch, and I, like I don't want right. to do that type of stuff. Right. You know, I just didn't feel it. So then, how did you come across to do your new show that just to, I watched? Yeah, thank you. Of, to catch a beautician, how did we come across that? So to catch a beautician came from this um, production company called Scout. Uh, they reached out to me. What happened was I got a Facebook, no, like a Facebook instant message like request. Right. And it was like, hey, we would like you to come in and audition for this show. And I was like, that's weird. So this guy named Seven, who was the casting director, shout out to Seven, thank you. <laughs> uh, you changed my life, I love Seven. Um, he reached out to me and had me come in because he said that, I guess Scout had had their like group of people that they were casting and they wanted to come in and audition. But he said he researched and found me and just thought that I would be a good choice. Mm -hmm. Came in, auditioned, then I came in and did another audition, and then we did the chemistry test, and that's why I realized Tamar, Tamar Braxton would be my co-host. Okay, so you didn't know that. I didn't know in, in the beginning, and then we did the chemistry test. Of course, everybody sees right. our great chemistry yeah, together. Well. We, we love each other. Um, and the chemistry test happened, and then next thing you know, it was greenlit. Oh, it happened. Wow. 20 episodes. 20, 20 episodes. episodes. We did it. Yeah, how, for VH1. how was that? Show it was great. Episodes? So... It was great. It was a lot of work. It was like, a lot of work. How long is a day shooting 20 episodes? It varied. So we would sometimes get on set at 7. The call time was 7 in the morning. Sometimes I would leave at 2. Sometimes I would leave at midnight. Sometimes I would leave at 7. You know, it, it would vary. Because, you know, I, was, I had to be there to assist in the makeover. I had to make sure they looked good. They were doing the right thing. So, you know, it, it, it took about three days, two to three days to film an episode. And we shot 20 episodes in two months. Solid. Straight. Okay. So yeah. those that are not familiar with television don't really realize a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And it's especially a for a show like yours. So I don't know of anyone that hasn't seen it, but the format of your show is... Someone comes to you and Tamar, mm -hmm. they discuss what their hair issues are, mm -hmm. uh, they talk about the person that did it, mm -hmm. and you guys bring the person in under the assumption that they are meeting with you to work a job. Which is true. <laughs> well, it's not the job they think they're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and after they do that, yeah. um, you have Tamar come out the back and bust them for being uh, people that are tearing up people's hair. Right. My question to you is, and after watching this show, I cringe because I'm wondering, because there were some people that handled it very gracefully. Yeah. yeah. What is going through your mind knowing that and, and feeling the energy of some of those people? Yeah. What is going through your mind when those people... It was, it was honestly the most intense emotion every time that... Every time you know, Tamar would be in my ear and she would be telling me, why am I nervous? I'm saying, you know I'm nervous. I'm always nervous. Because those were real stories. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is not all, this was made up and this is real stories, yeah. you know? And so I always thought like how I would feel if I was in that situation. Right. You know, like I ain't gonna tell you no lie, I would have been that episode where the lady left. Yeah. She yeah. was like, you embarrassed me. Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of people that, you know, wanted to jump jump ship. But right. you know, we kind of convinced them to come back because the great thing about the show is that, you know, I like to call the show a cross between botched and to catch a predator. Right, right, right it is. You know, because it's like that mystery of not yeah. knowing and you get this a sting, you don't know you're about to get caught. Um, but um, the great thing about the show is we allow both stories to be told and then there's a moment of redemption. So nobody's getting beat up, right? right? Yeah, it's that uncomfortable sting moment. And 
I always tried my best, I'm sure you saw, to be on the side of the side no. when I could. I no. tried. I think the formula, first of all, of having Tamar yeah. come out. Yeah. Because first of all, they're sort of that eases it a little bit because yeah. they don't want to show off in front of a celebrity. Exactly. That, sort of that makes it better, yeah. 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 But it's just, it, I am always have, when I'm watching every episode, I'm nervous for all of you all. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, please tell me security yeah. is very close. No, he's always there. We always have security <laughs> there. Yeah. Because it just feels like at any moment they could just, you know. So what is it, how do you convince someone that's like, oh, I, I, I feel embarrassed that, especially some of those that have been doing hair a long time. Yeah. Now, to, to, um, I did watch some episodes, and being a hairstylist, I realized there are certain things that the client has done yeah. that they're not and telling. I, and I made sure I pointed that out every yeah. time. I'm, I'm not that, I'm like, I want you to know you didn't communicate, right. you didn't say it right. They, they, they may not have gotten what you wanted, but it was up to you to make sure they knew what you wanted. Exactly. You know what I mean? But for me, I would... I always come from an honest place, and I will have that stylist to stylist talk with them. Like, listen, you agreed to be here. Right. I understand we just stung you, but you don't want this on your reputation. Right. Right? And you did mess up. Right. Okay? Maybe it was a bad day, because I have them too. We right. all do. But you messed up. So, right. and these are conversations that we had behind the scenes. Right, you, right. The, the guys didn't, people didn't get to see. Right. And we was able to get them to the point where we filmed them saying, yes, I'm happy to stay and get redeem myself, right? right? But there was a quite a, you think 20 cases, there was a quite a few people who was like, I'm getting the heck out of here. Yeah, I'm not staying I, here for this. I, I so. can't imagine. And I totally get it. I gotcha. totally get it. So, well, it was definitely excited to see. I was definitely happy for yeah. you to see. I'm always happy to see people branch out. Um, I'm a huge uh, proponent of seeing people diversify yeah. and not just be pigeon to that hairstylist. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I met you as an educator. We worked together. I've known you for like seven years now. Yeah, I met you while. at Salt yeah. Yeah. You came in to do, uh, to talk. You were talking then. Yeah. Were, that's when we would talk to the buyers mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yep. um, yeah. what do you want to do as far as education? I did my research and you, I heard you say that you wanted to do a uh, university or an mm -hmm. academy or something. I do. Yeah, but see, I want to do an academy, but I want it to be for advanced training. Um, I'm not interested in teaching people from the beginning how to do hair. No, right. I want stylists that are ready to expand their career. And I want to do uh, an academy that is solely focused on that. Um, gotcha. And the business of the, you know, of the, the freelance industry, a lot of stylists don't know that and they kind of mess up because they don't know how to like manage their books and you know manage their, their timing and all that kind of stuff and how to properly pack their kit and, what they need to have and have a relationship with hair companies and brands and stuff like that so you can have plenty full amount of product. Oh, yeah, that is a part of it. It's yes. a part of the, the thing. So I definitely want to do that. I definitely want to do more TV because I had a lot of fun doing that. Right. And I have a lot of stuff in, in, in the works. So that, that's a fun thing. And right now I'm looking on getting my product line out. Um, and it, at this point, I will attach a concept salon to it. So, okay. um, so we'll, it'll be a bunch of, just think of it like a dry bar for black women. Oh, I yeah. love it. Yeah, I but it. the product is really what's gonna sell, sell it and people will come and get service after they understand what the product is. But yeah, that's what I kinda wanna do. I just wanna do more stuff like that. I always tell people I don't set goals because I think goals are limiting. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. I was like, Johnny, you have accomplished so much. Yeah. I mean. And you're very fairly young, um, yeah. so we're the same age. So I, I'm just like, what even would be left for you even left to do? It's so much more. I mean, for me, the sky's the limit, right? Gotcha. And I'm, I'm open to new things. I'm open to acting. I'm open to, you know, I'm open to all those type of mm -hmm. things. And for me, that's why I don't set goals, because I think those things are so limiting. Like, when you can say the sky's the limit and you're open and willing to do whatever is positive and beautiful that comes in your life, then... It really is limitless, and I don't know, you know, what's next, but I know there will be a good next. Okay. You know, I just keep my faith. <laughs> All right. So I haven't did this in a while, but I yeah. will ask you, um, what is beautiful to you, behind the scenes beauty? What what do you find? What does Johnny Wright find beauty in? Optimism. You know, I always say that um, my my motto is beauty through the lens of optimism, and I, I'm an eternal optimist. You know that about me. Yeah. Um, but I think optimism is beauty. And I think it's beautiful because that 
how you know you would never be depressed in life? You're the first person that I've ever asked that question, and they didn't have to roll it around in their head. You, <laughs> were, you were like, bam, <laughs> up the mess up. Yeah, okay, yeah, up I think it's beautiful. I That's do. That's great. Okay, yeah. Johnny, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I you. I'm so glad you guys check Johnny out. <laughs> Tell them where they can find you on all social media. On all social media, I am Johnny Wright 220 um, That's second to none. Um, and you can find me on all social media outlets with that. All right. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.